Hi there, my name is Tim Warner. I'm a trainer with CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Microsoft Link Server 2010 Understanding Link 2010 Components. What we're going to cover in this Micro Nugget are the major pieces of software with which Link administrators and Link users interact with that unified communications platform. I'm assuming you know at least a little bit about what Link is, but you want to know exactly how we interact with it. So to that end, I've divided our discussion into three sections. Link server planning and guidance tools, Link server administration tools, first party only of course, and then the Link client application set. Yes, there's more than one Link client. The reason why this micro nugget is useful, I think, is because there's just so much out there available for Link, but because it's not all linked together, if you'll pardon the accurate pun, it's easy to not realize that you have help out there and tools out there just because nobody's told you or you haven't seen references. Now what you're seeing on the right is a good example of a Link capable phone, a Polycom CX500 that runs the Microsoft Link 2010 phone edition. We're not going to cover phones as such in this micro nugget, but I wanted to at least put a bookmark there for further discussion. Let me know if you'd like more coverage on that subject. Now then, as far as planning tools go, Microsoft gives us the planning tool for Microsoft Link Server 2010. This is a free download desktop application meant to run on your client workstation. It'll interview you, ask you a bunch of questions about what you, what you hope to get out of unified communications and what you hope to get out of Link, and it will suggest a topology for you. You'll note here on the toolbar, we can export your resultant topology in a variety of formats, including Visio, Excel, and this third button, this weird looking guy, is the topology builder, which is one of the administration tools in and it's, believe me, a really cool thing and a convenient thing that we can take the output of this planning tool and put it and build our live link topology from this work. Very cool. Going online, you can get the planning tool from the Microsoft Download Center, and this is actually a great hub for obtaining some of those additional free resources I told you about earlier. What I love about the TechNet download site is this related downloads and what others are downloaded. Loading. You can spend time clicking through these links and then on those target pages look at what others are downloading from there and before you'll know it you'll have a lot of link resources downloaded to your system the resource kit tool the planning guide the capacity calculator we cover all this stuff in the full training that I do for CBT nuggets for link server 2010 administration I also mentioned one of the key blogs that you need to put on your RSS feed is the next top blog these are Microsoft partners and employees who write on Link. And this particular page, Link Server Resources, gives you quick links to all of your need-to-know components and resources in Link. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. I'm going to show you the tools in a live Link Server topology. Here we are on a Windows Server 2000 R2 box named Link Nugget, and this is my front-end server and my Link topology. Let me quickly buzz you through the major admin and client tools in Link Server 2010. As you grow your topology, you initially roll out components, and then moreover, later on as you're adding and removing server roles, you'll become very familiar with this tool. This is the Link Server 2010 Topology Builder. It is included during your installation of Link. Let me just quickly jump into to my start menu and show you the contents of the Link Server 2010 program group. We have the deployment wizard and the topology builder, which as I said, are your main tools when you're modifying your Link topology. Something we're not going to discuss in this micro nugget due to time is the Link Server logging tool. This is especially helpful for performance tuning and troubleshooting purposes. As far as the other icons in that group, I'd be glad to show you those. The Link Management Shell, whoops, this is the Link Control Panel. The Link Management Shell is a command line environment based on PowerShell 2.0 that gives us a whole bunch, over 500 PowerShell commandlets that enable us to do just about everything as far as link administration is concerned. There are still a few tasks that you have to use the control panel for and a few tasks actually more than a few, that you have to use the management shell for. All of the commandlets have a noun portion that begin with CS. That's a common convention. For instance, get-cs user is going to return all of our link-enabled users and their associated metadata. The Link Server 2010 control panel is accessible two different ways. What you're looking at is the Silverlight version. On your front-end servers in your programs group, you have an icon for the Link Server control panel, and that 
doesn't launch a browser, it actually launches the Silverlight application. That's what this whole interface is, as a matter of fact. The main way to access the control panel, though, actually, is through a web browser. As it happens, when you set up your first front-end pool, you're asked to define what's called an admin URL. Everything is using TLS and certificates, so this is HTTPS, and on my box, it's admin.nuggetlab.com. You're not going to want to publish this URL to the internet, of course, but it's going to provide secure internal access access to the control panel from any workstation or server in your domain. And as you can see, it's the very same Silverlight application, and yes, you do have to have Silverlight installed in order to access the control panel. The way the control panel works is that you have the primary navigation at left. For instance, I'll go over to voice routing where we do enterprise voice configuration. The secondary navigation is done here across the top. Most of these elements, if not all of them, have several secondary navigation settings sections, and then it works on the basis of policy. You wind up scoping policy. By default, the starter policies are all global to your entire deployment. But as you go along, you may want, especially as your link infrastructure grows larger, you may want to create other scope levels. For instance, at a site level, a pool level, or a user level when you're creating a dial plan. So those are the major inbox administration tools. The main client tool, of course, is a separate installation, the Link 2010 client, and or it can run, I should say, in the notification area of your system. As you see, hovering over the icon shows whether you're signed in or not, as well as your presence. If you right-click that icon, you can change your presence very easily. Presence is a key component of link and unified communications. You can do everything with link from within this single client. It's a big advance that Microsoft has made since previous versions of this product. You'll see, for instance, if I click Tim Warner, my contact here, I can expand his information contact card and connect to him via email. I can direct dial his phone. I can schedule a meeting with him. As I said, depending upon phone numbers available, I can call him and even add a conversation subject to that call. But of course, before I do that, I'll want to check his presence. And Tim is offline, so that immediately tells me that sending him an instant message is not going to work. I best choose another modality, perhaps email, you see. By contrast, you see Susan Warner shows up with the available presence color. There's a lot more to this link client. Let me know if you'd like a deeper dive. I'd be glad to record one or more additional micro nuggets on the subject. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.